à tous pour être ici jusqu'à cette heure. Euh, comme le professeur Bassin a, a dit, c'est la fin de mon séjour de trois mois ici à Montréal. Un très bon séjour. Et nous, Brésiliens, nous sommes vraiment émotifs. Donc, je dois commencer pour remercier trois personnes. Euh, Christian Terrien, le candidat au doctorat brésilien. Et Florian, parce que le deux m'ont invité pour venir ici. Et c'est grâce aux deux que je suis là. Le professeur Isol Jandro, qui m'a reçu le premier jour et jusqu'à la fin est à mon côté. Et je veux aussi remercier Julien et Adam et Victor et Anthony pour votre amitié dans l'université. C'était une expérience extraordinaire. Merci beaucoup. Ma brésilianité termine ici. <rire> ma présentation, mais malheureusement, je pense que mon français n'est pas, pas si bon, et c'est pour ça que je m'excuse et je ferai ma présentation en anglais, sauf pour les titres qui est en français, mais le reste serait en anglais, et c'est pour ça que je commence « Now to speak in English uh, ». The reason, the object of my presentation is to show you, to present you some cases in Brazil that connect trademark to other intellectual property fields, such as copyright et la concurrence de loya, uh, unfair competition. After speaking French for some days, <laughs> it gets messy, but okay. Uh, this is the purpose of my, my presentation. So I div I'll divide it into two parts. The first part, I'll talk very briefly and generally about Brazilian law, and then I will present you the three or four cases in which we can see this connection. So what is the trademark according to the Brazilian law? I was very fortunate to be here from the very beginning of this day because I learned a lot from all of you, and I also would like to thank you for your so clear presentations. Uh, in Brazil, for example, a trademark is a distinctive sign visually perceptible. So we only have visual trademarks in Brazil that can be registered as trademarks. Not prohibited by law, only these marks can be registered as a trademark. So for example, the sound of a motorcycle or the scent of a perfume cannot be registered in Brazil. In uh, some eight <coughs> months ago, it's written there, first registration of trademark, a tactile trademark in Colombia. So our neighbor, Colombia, started allowing uh, different kinds of trademarks, not only visually perceptible, but not in Brazil. Uh, this was the, the trademark that was registered in Colombia. It's the, the shape of, it's not the shape because we have three-dimensional marks, but it's the texture of the, the bottle that was registered in Colombia, not in Brazil. Uh, we follow this classification for years. I started working with trademarks. My main object of research is copyright. But for many years, I worked with trademarks, beginning in 1999. And Brazil, by the time, already was following this classification, the 45 uh, classes. So this is why. We had, for example, the same trademark vision for a magazine and for a product to, to clean the house. No, no, no problem in having the same name protected by two different companies. Or, for example, a hotel called Diplomata and a chocolate called Diplomata. It's okay, no problem. This is to the, the principle of the specialization. De, de la classification de this. Um, one exception of this principle is the highly reputed or renowned trademarks. Somebody has already mentioned it today, that those are the trademarks that are so important that they cover the 45 classes instead of getting uh, an exclusivity over only one class. And in Brazil, we don't have many uh, trademarks identified, officially identified as 
highly reputed or, or highly renowned trademarks. I'll show you all of them. Uh, McDonald's, for example, uh, obtained, of course, these uh, these statutes of highly reputed trademark after uh, an administrative procedure. Pirelli is another. Do you know Pirelli? Yeah. It's for tires. Yes. yes. For tires. It obtained these statutes because somebody tried to register this. Pay attention to the trademark Pirelli. It's, it's uh, the name and the, the visual aspect, yes. And somebody tried to register this trademark, Pirelli. <laughs> As you can see, it, it was not for tires, but anyhow. Uh, Pirelli requested the status of highly renowned trademark and obtained. So the the highly renowned trademarks in Brazil are it's always this is the official document, the trademarks are always in the first column. Pirelli, Hollywood for cigars, 3M, Kibon, which is an ice cream, uh, Natura, it's product cosmetic cosmetics, uh, Mosa is condensed milk. Bombril is a clean product, Chanel, the, the, the perfume, Sadia is sausage, McDonald's, Fusca, uh, it's a Volkswagen car, Barbie the doll, PlayStation the video game, Honda, and it's missing Fabric Castell. So only these trademarks are highly reputed or renowned in this. Um, but I would like to, to talk to you, to present to you, some cases that do not involve these trademarks, but also other famous trademarks, and how our courts decided when the protection of the, these trademarks were, was required by the involved in the case. Uh, the first case is concerns Hermès, the French trademark everybody knows, of course. It's a very famous trademark. And this is the website of Hermes, and if you pay attention, you will see that Brazil is not mentioned there. If you can see the countries, and you cannot find Brazil. Although, there are uh, products of Hermes being sold in Brazil. And you all know that the, the products Hermes sells are very expensive, extremely expensive. Here is a, an advertisement. Uh, showing how much would the Birkin, the Birkin purse, would cost. And uh, it's a huge amount of money. Um, in Brazil, there is also a trademark that was registered in 1942, which means it's a very old trademark, Erlich. It's written the same way. Uh, so cool, like so, uh, on the E. So it's Hermes and Hermes. Uh, Hermes decided to request the annulment to annul the the the, the register the, re the registration of Hermes. And uh, the but Hermes sells for also persons. But the purses they sell cost 10 Canadian dollars. So there is no possibility of confusion between the two publics. Probably the public of FMS doesn't even know that Agnes exists, and vice versa, of course. Uh, and then, no, uh, I, I, I think it was Agnes, it was the Brazilian trademark who didn't want Hermes to sell the products in Brazil. It was the Brazil. Oh. It was the and the, because they had the, the, the trademark, this is the registration of Hermes in, in Brazil. But the court's decision was, here you can, what's underlined is just to prove to you that you can read Portuguese model as well, because it's so similar. No possibility de confusion entre les the le, le consumer of the mark for the cause or the cause or the cause of the existence of the 
the, the money. Uh, there is such a big difference between the two publics and the two groups of consumers that there is no possibility of confusion. And this is why the court, this, this is a decision of a high court in Brazil, decided that both trademarks were acting in good faith, they were both respectable, they both had a good relationship with their consumers. None of them was trying to violate loyal competition. None of them was trying to obtain consumers from the other trade because it would be just impossible, right? It's impossible. A person who buys a purse, somebody who buys a purse for 10 Canadian dollars cannot and will never buy a purse that costs 4,000 euros. And of course, the opposite is also true. And this is a very interesting case that if we look at the Nice classification, it would be impossible the coexistence of both trademarks because they are both in the same class of Nice classification. However, the decision was taken, taking into consideration much more la concurrence de loyal, de loyal que le mar. Uh, a second case, also involving MS, was a copyright case. This is uh, Anua, uh, is of the first, is the MS. The, the, the other first was being sold by a Brazilian company. And do you think they are very similar? Yeah. Well, many people thought they were very similar. And MS, now it was MS, uh, who sued the Brazilian company for copyright infringement. The name, it's well, the name of the second verse is the, the name by, it, it was sold was, I'm not the original. This was the name. It was sold like, I'm not the original. But the, the price is also completely different. Uh, the second one, the Brazilian one, cost uh, 150 Canadian dollars. There is no comparison with the other. But the judge understood that copyright was applicable here. And uh, the Brazilian company could not sell the product anymore because of copyright infringement, plagiarism. I'm not very convinced. I think copyright and trademarks have very specific ways of thinking, the theory. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I think if, if, we can, uh, if we want to opt for uh, unfair competition, okay. But copyright, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense. But this is not the first time that in Brazil, uh, a trademark case is decided based on copyright. This is not very common, but this was not the first time. Uh, this is the, this the second case. Uh, another case is, involves those two companies. The second trademark, you know, it's United, the, flag, the American flag company, and the other one is Urubukunda is a Brazilian company for buses, not flying company. It's a local Brazilian company for buses in the state of Sao Paulo. For example, I have never heard of that and of this company. However, United thought that it was a good idea to sue Urubukunda because of the use of the U. They said that the U was the same. Well, I think it's not very likely that somebody who wants to take a plane to the United States will take instead a bus to the <laughs> state of Sao Paulo. And uh, this is why this case was also decided, taking into consideration unfair competition and 
that there is no way to make consumers take one company by the other. Uh, during this day, this was the last case, but I, because of everything that was said before, I remembered something else that I would like to comment. In this case, it's very interesting. It concerns Walmart, and uh, it took place in the very south of Brazil. It was a city in which there was Walmart, and many local small markets. And uh, although our, our, our law, our intellectual property law, doesn't allow explicitly the comparison with the publicity uh, comparative, uh, although it's not explicitly allowed, it, it is allowed because of some class organs that regulate publicity. And so it is possible to make comparative publicity. Walmart did the following. You went, the people from Walmart went to smaller markets and collected the pamphlets, folders, with products and prices, of like milk, bread, this kind of thing. They took it to Walmart and glued it to the wall. These are the other markets sell. And they, they put their own price beside, say, here is cheaper, so don't go to these markets. From a theoretical perspective, it's not very clear if it is, is lawful or not. However, the court decision was in the way to prohibit Walmart to do that because this is the interesting thing. Because the, the court understood that the biggest player, he was much more powerful. He couldn't do that to smaller players of the market because Walmart would destroy the competition in that city. And after destroying the competition in that city, it could raise its price to whatever they wanted. And uh, so, uh, if we consider in the long term, it would be bad for the community. This is also theoretically possible, but you will never find an agreement on this solution, not even in Brazil. But I, I, I remember that because it's, again, it's a case in which you don't decide only taking into consideration trademarks, but also social aspects and the purpose of having the trademark. What's the purpose in making the comparison in that case? It's only to destroy the competition. If this is the situation, so you're not allowed to do that. So this is what I wanted to share with you. I give you, I always leave with you with the view of our office yeah. in Brazil. I <laughs> <laughs> so you tempted yes. to, okay. to go there to visit us. And in case you go there, you will be good. Florian yeah. was there and he's yeah. a witness that this no filter, that. no, no filter, no, I couldn't say that. But well, it's basically uh, beautiful as it seems. So you will always be very welcome there in case you go to Rio. Thank you very much. And that's your